Welcome to this workshop on MPC integrated with optimization. In this workshop, we'll explore the different features of MPC that has an integrated optimization capability. To show off this capability, we'll be using the heavy oil fractionator application challenge by Shell. And uh, this allows us then to demonstrate many of the features of MPC. And the first part of our workshop will show the configuration of MPC how data developed during testing of the process is used to uh, create the model used in MPC. And then we'll show how the commissioned MPC is used to maintain uh, top composition targets, and then how it handles uh, disturbances to the uh, process application. The uh, process, uh, the heavy oil uh, fractionator uh, application proposed by Shell as a challenge is a highly collinear process, very difficult to control, uh, and therefore is a good example of showing how MPC can handle a very complex unit. The feed to the column is determined by an upstream unit. Um, the lighter components exit uh, through the top draw. The uh, intermediate components exit the side draw and heavier components the bottom. Uh, heating for the fractionation process is provided by a lower heater which we can adjust. The intermediate and top are uh, heaters of which introduce disturbances into the process. The um, heat duty is uh, a disturbance to our process. The uh, composition of the top and uh, side draws are control parameters. To simulate the, uh, the fractionator process, we're using a module in which we have one composite block that represents the uh, fractionator. The uh, inputs to the uh, simulation are the outputs of our controller. And uh, in the shell problem, everything was unitless. It was 0 to 100%, so we're using scaling uh, blocks to scale things exactly as the way uh, the shell application required. The uh, inputs to our simulation, which are the outputs of our control system or disturbance inputs, um, the dynamics associated with each of those in terms of impacting each of the outputs are are defined by the dead time gain and lag. Um, so each input potentially impacts each output in a different manner. And in the composite, we allow the dynamics as defined in the shell problem to be exactly duplicated. The outputs of our simulation then are written to the input blocks that normally would be the uh, measurements uh, in the control module that will be provided by transmitters on our process. Uh, the module in which we're going to have our MPC control uh, contains the MPC block which is used to configure and also to implement the control of MPC. The inputs and control loops associated with the process are also contained within the same module just to make it easier to see everything at, at one point. The uh, configuration of the MPC Pro block that is used to define model predictive control is, is quite straightforward. Um, the inputs and outputs of our process are uh, contained within four tabs there, the Control, Manipulate, Disturbance, and Constraint tabs. Uh, by clicking on one of these tabs, then we can define the associated inputs or outputs of the process that are associated with that area. Uh, to uh, define an input or to modify an input, we basically click on it. We can define a user-friendly name for that. And to define where that input or output is, we can browse anywhere within the entire control system to define the path to that information. Once the uh, configuration is defined, then the uh, module can be uh, downloaded to the controller uh, that will uh, contain then the MPC. So once we've defined it, all the inputs and outputs are automatically assigned to the historian. So when we open uh, the application that is used to commission uh, the MPC, then the inputs and outputs are automatically shown in the faceplates at the bottom of the uh, screen here as little faceplates. 
You notice also that the inputs and outputs uh, can be trended uh, in the uh, trend area of this application window. The um, setup of the test used to identify the process model is shown here uh, so we can then define the step size that we'll be introducing in manipulated parameters. Also trends can be defined that allow us to monitor our application during the testing process. Uh, also uh, in this we can define the time to study state. Uh, that's about the only thing that we need to define to do the test. During the testing of the process the uh, inputs to a process that can be manipulated or changed in a pseudo-random fashion. Uh, the time of testing is determined by the time to study state that the user specifies. So once the uh, testing of the process is done, uh, then uh, we can uh, select the uh, data, that is the, the uh, area selected, and then we can generate our model. In this particular case, the model has been generated. By looking at the model itself, we can look at whether or not it uh, duplicated what happened uh, during the time frame of the data that was used in developing the model. So you can see here that the model very accurately reflects the uh, process response to changes in inputs. Also, it's possible then to look at the step response associated with each output of our process in terms of the impact of each process input. Uh, so that is shown here. Uh, we can drill in and look at an individual step response if we want to look at it in higher fidelity. Uh, once we have uh, identified the uh, model and verified the uh, step response, uh, then it is possible to go into a simulation environment uh, to test the control before we actually put it online. Once we're satisfied that the control is, is good, we can then uh, download the module. This puts the module into the controller, which then allows us then to operate the process using MPC. The operator window to MPC is shown here. It automatically uses the names and uh, the parameters that were defined in the MPC block. Those are shown in the small faceplates down below. By clicking on a small faceplate, then the information associated with that is shown in larger on the left, which allows us then to change set points and uh, uh, different parameters, constraint limits of the MPC. By going to the top, uh, by clicking on MPC, all the downstream blocks are automatically put in the correct mode. The MPC can run an automatic or manual or remote cascade. The uh, trend windows that we defined uh, in our uh, setup uh, the commit during commissioning are automatically used uh, here in the operator interface. And, uh, those can then be used to visualize uh, the process uh, responses. On the right hand side we see the two disturbances to our application, uh, the uh, top reflux duty and intermediate. So we are going to change those in terms of introducing a disturbance to our process to look at how MPC handles that. So at the point we introduce the disturbance you notice that the top and intermediate compositions start to deviate a little bit from their application but MPC is taking action to counter that disturbance to drive us back to a uh, target. As you can see here fairly quickly uh, the processes, uh, the action taken by MPC is starting to bring us back to set point and the green area is a future prediction of where the parameters are going to go and so we see that the future prediction of the two control parameters says they're going to end up at set point in a very short period of time and as we forward in time here you see they do get back right to set point uh, countering uh, exactly offsetting the, um, the disturbance without impacting other, any of the other control parameters or in violating any constraints to uh, demonstrate the uh, manner in which we're able to change uh, the target of one parameter without impacting the other, 
I will change the uh, top um, endpoint um, target. Uh, when we change that, then we notice that uh, in the future we're predicting that this is going to come right up to set point without impacting our other uh, control parameter. You notice the uh, changes that have to be made, multiple outputs are changed to allow the one parameter to be uh, changed without impacting the other. So uh, here we're seeing that in the future, after the delay through a process, that the control parameter will start to come up to a uh, set point. Uh, using con traditional control, this would be a very difficult thing, but through MPC, uh, it automatically decouples the interaction between the uh, parameters and allows us then to uh, change one parameter at a time uh, without uh, any disruption. Here we forward in time to see the impact and so the changes that we made in the uh, manipulated parameters exactly brought us to target without disrupting the other uh, control parameter. Uh, using the uh, linear uh, program that's embedded within MPC, it's possible to define multiple objectives. So one of those could be, say, maximize top draw. By having this capability, then the operator can operate the unit in different operating modes just by selecting the optimization feature he'd like to uh, use in running the application. So I hope this uh, example has been helpful to you in understanding the capability of MPC with optimization integrated and uh, maybe gives you ideas of how this could be applied to improve your process operation.